Hi, I've just um I'm just coming on and doing a little um chat with Hannah Watson. Um and Hannah is using the Emmy Pet teeth cleaning service. She's just added it to her business. And um, so I'll just do a little quick introduction on Hannah. So I just thought that people on my social media might like to see someone that's actually using the Emmy Pet in practice and using it successfully, um, just to get a bit more of an idea of how the Emmy Pet could work within a business setting if you're adding it on as an ancillary service to an existing business, or if you're wanting to set it up as a standalone um, business as well. So Hannah, is you live in, is it? The Norfolk Suffolk border. Yes. Yeah. Just and, on it, the border, yeah. and it's a, is it a town or a village? Tiny little village, completely in the sticks. Yeah. Rum, Rumbra. Rumbra, that's the one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you have um, a livery, a livery yard. Yes. Yes. That, so I yeah. have, I have horses. Uh -huh. um, and that's where I, I actually base clean canines my my teeth cleaning business yeah um so that the, the two don't really go together dog horses, <laughs> but I thought you know what I've got a spare room let's do something with it yeah so what better to do than start off something completely opposite <laughs> <laughs> but I think you know if you if you're a country girl through and through you know you love animals you've got you've got a whole pack of dogs at your house have you got six dogs Yes, we have six yeah. dogs. Yeah, it's it's an absolute madhouse and a two year old daughter. So it's oh, gosh. completely crazy. But yeah, <laughs> you're like Wonder Woman because I've I've got two dogs and one toddler in it. I struggle with that and I haven't got a livery. <laughs> I don't know how you do it all. Hats off to you, Hannah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I couldn't do all that. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely manic but yeah it's totally worth it. it it's worth it in the end that's what I keep telling myself <laughs> yeah <laughs> so so you're quite rurally based yes yeah we're not really close to any big cities big towns anything like that mm -hmm. um so I did think to myself is this kind of the right thing to do but because no one else actually does it in this area or, or promotes it that I know of, I thought yeah. actually this, this is going to be a good route to go down for sure. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'll just ask you because you've done my training as well, and I'm yeah. So you've been. This is quite a new service that you're offering um, yeah. al alongside your livery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I completed the training. Um, and it was actually not long after my toothbrush finally arrived. So it's it really has been a rush to kind of get things sorted. But as soon as the toothbrush arrived, I was practicing on my dogs, my friends' dogs, family dogs, absolutely everything to get a portfolio going. Yeah. And then just to set up my social media. And, and as soon as I've done that, because I've got previous pictures as such, people have gone, okay, she knows what she's doing. Yeah. So because I completed the training with you and you went into so much depth about um, what to look for, um, when you can actually turn clients away, which is such a massive thing. Mm -hmm. And you just made us feel quite comfortable with doing that. And that's yeah. a major thing where I thought, I don't know if I can actually turn people away or what the line is. So yeah, that training definitely helped. Yeah. So where did you first hear about Emmy Pet, Hannah? What sort of, where did you hear about it? Because some people it takes them a while to hear about Emmy Pet, or they might have. Where was? Do you remember the first time you heard about it? It was um, it was a mixture between my mum um, because she acquired a, a little old dog um, who had really bad teeth, and she was taking him to somewhere in Colchester, which is over an hour from me. Hmm. Um, and she said, "Oh, he's he's going through all this teeth cleaning, and it's like hundreds of pounds." But is there not a way that you could do that and offer service at a more affordable rate for people? Because I myself know that I've got a dog with dirty teeth and I'm sure other people have as well. Yeah. So I thought, OK, I'll have a research, have a Google. Um, and it was actually Emmy Pet and is it Cleany Teeth? Yeah. They were the top two. And I thought, OK, I'm going to need to do a bit of research here. But the reviews were just amazing for Emmy Pet. So mm -hmm. I thought it was just a no brainer. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Because I, I remember the first time that I seen it was maybe about five years ago. And yeah. um, I did initially see it, but I was a bit more hesitant because it was quite new on the market at the time. And I didn't actually really know anyone that was using it. And I wanted the proof to be in the pudding. And so I kind of 
didn't go for it for about 12 months um so I seen it and then 12 months later I decided to purchase so it was a I was a little bit more hesitant at the beginning but I'm so glad that I did it now because I absolutely love it it's brilliant yeah. and it's part of the social media groups as well that you can join for support um encouragement from people that helped massively to see that there is actually a community that if you do get stuck there are people that will answer and will try and help you out as much as possible so I thought even if I start this and I don't get the results immediately, I know that I can ask. Yeah. That yeah. Was- and um, I run a support group as well on Facebook. That's Emmy Pet Made Simple with the Dog Tooth Fairy. Um, the Dog Tooth Fairy is my, my business. So I, I distribute and I sell Emmy Pet toothbrushes and things. But that support group is brilliant because everybody in there sort of helps each other out and sometimes um if I'm busy with my toddler through the day and I can't answer somebody's message straight away the other people in the group are are given really good answers as well so everybody supports each other which is really good yeah well as we said previously um in a in a message of conversation all it took was for me to comment and say just use the the gel that you sell because that, that actually really works and if you use it um combined with the remover tool as well it, it just really helps to have other people there like you say if you can't get to your phone straight away yeah um, I mean I'm not an expert by any means but all I said was just give it a go honestly yeah. it does work and then it yeah. just sold out didn't it yeah yeah it did so thanks for that Anna yeah, right <laughs> it's like having a little army of tooth fairies it's great yeah. <laughs> so did you just decide right away that this is what you wanted to do or did you feel any blocks or hesitation where you thought mm, I'm not quite sure about this or do you just go for it when you get an idea in your head I was slightly worried because of the area that I'm in um mm. that was probably my main thing because there's so many farmers with working dogs who who wouldn't really go for that sort of service yeah so I thought, am I better to actually open up the dog groomers rather than um, a teeth cleaning service because I've I've had experience previously um, in a dog grooming salon just as a bather but I thought okay I, I have some kind of knowledge about how hard it could be um, so is it is it right but like I said previously because there is no one else that really does it that I know of or that can see advertises or promotes it there are so many people that have dogs surely yeah. surely people are going to want this service and yeah I was right. Within 48 hours of advertising, I was booked up for three weeks. That so, is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's absolutely amazing. Yeah, I was inundated with messages, but it really helped having a portfolio prior to advertising. Um, because if people can see that you actually know what you're doing or you you know what you're talking about, you can actually get some results. Yeah. Then they're much more likely to say, OK, we'll just give it a go. Yeah. And you don't necessarily have to um, start your business on your real clients to build that portfolio. So if you don't if you don't have a business, if you don't have a bricks and mortar grooming salon to work from, like like you said, there's always friends, neighbors, relatives, like anyone that can get the dog's teeth cleaned for a reduced price or even free at, at the beginning is going to say, yes, please do. And then you can build your portfolio from there. That all you have to do is ask your friends and family and I'm sure at least one person will have a dog that you can start with so <laughs> yeah <laughs> and is that your main um the main way that you market yourself is it all done through social media yeah all social media currently all it is um is advertising to local dog groups um mm-hmm. and local sale pages um and th- that's really it I haven't done any paid advertising through Facebook Instagram nothing all I've done is Facebook so far um but obviously we do have local pet shops and it might be worth putting in some posters or Mm -hmm. cards something like that if it does start to kind of dry up a little bit but yeah to be honest if you if you do your research enough I I don't think anyone will have a problem starting up yeah yeah um I'm just looking because I've got some questions that um some of the social media followers of have sent in I'm just I'm just having a little look to see what they've written on here um let's have a look all right one of my questions anyway so you you seem really focused on your new venture and um, what is it that you love so much much about the Emmy pet Hannah 
it's the fact that you do actually get results Mm -hmm. Um, it's not just a placebo effect which some people might think it is it's not just you scrub so hard on the tooth and then yeah it has to come off it's not like that at all Mm -hmm. Um, and the fact that it doesn't cause any pain to the dog you don't need the anesthetic um and they can do whatever they want they don't have to be standing up on a table they can just sit down on a dog bed they can lay down they can do whatever they like um and it's just a so much more enjoyable process than going to the vets and yeah. all of that so that's what I love so much about it mm-hmm. I find it quite holistic as well like from a dog owner point of view yeah. um my dogs are like my little babies and I really don't want them to have to go under anesthetic unnecessarily just for something that is maintenance that that I could do do myself um so I love that that aspect of it and I find it really relaxing to perform as well because I know some people um some groomers will say oh I find it really boring but for me it's I can chill out and I can I can meditate and I can let my mind go elsewhere or I can be coming up with new ideas for things and there's all sorts of things that you can do at the same time um you know if you Emmy petting with your your pet at home you can be watching tv and things it doesn't need to take your attention all of the time so I find it quite a relaxing thing it is definitely and the fact that you can bond with the dog at the same time yeah um is just it is just so nice you can't words don't even describe it because you're doing something that will help the dog if they do have um any slight diseases that are coming on anything like that you can just help the dog become a a little more pain free yeah Um, that means a lot to be able to do that for not a lot of money for the client yeah and I do find it it's a lot calmer for the dog because I I was obviously a dog groomer um and you're asking dogs you know can I have your paw can I cut your nails can I do this can I can I blast you with this dog blaster and some dogs hate grooming um, but, you know, with the Emmy Pet Teeth Cleaning, I found probably about 80 to 90 percent of my clients just they just chilled out once they got used to it and they knew what it was. It was like, OK, then. And some of them would fall asleep on the table while I was doing it. And it's just lovely because it's you know that it's that nice bonding, relaxing yeah, thing. Definitely. Yeah. Um, right. So some of the questions that um, my followers have sent in, one of them is. A problem that lots of pet professionals face is getting your clients to rebook for maintenance sessions once the results have been achieved. Now, I find this as well. So when you do a course of sessions and you get the dog's teeth really nice, gleaming white, and then the client doesn't think that they have to book in for any more sessions. So how do you deal with this? Um, I tend to go from the direction of prevention rather than cure. Yeah. Um, so if they've paid for a block session, um, I mean, just for example, my first session is 35 and then my routine is 28. Mm-hmm. So if you can do a discount for them off of say 10, yeah. um, are they then going to want to pay out for 10 sessions again in a bulk block or mm-hmm. would they prefer to just do 28 pounds every couple of months, even yeah. just on top of it, rather than the dog go through that all over again, every week, every fortnight, mm-hmm. um, it's just trying to market it to the client as if but do you want it to come back do you want me to do the whole thing all over again yeah because your dog will be consistently comfortable and pain-free rather than okay we're getting painful again we're going to have to do 10 sessions all over again yeah Yeah, it's 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 hard it is really hard to try and get them on your side as such in that way but if the results do speak for themselves anyway they're more than likely to just rebook and it's really really important for the dogs to keep coming in for those regular maintenance sessions whether they're every you know four six eight weeks but that dog needs to keep coming in otherwise the teeth will quickly regress back to the way they were before and then like you say the clients wasted all that that money on getting the teeth to that level um Mm -hmm. and it's a shame because you know you've wasted all that effort and the dog's teeth look really nice and then the if you're not getting to the root source of the problem, which is clean the dog's teeth, and then you just let it slide, then the teeth yeah. just, you know, they go downhill quite quickly. Yeah, that's it. It, it. Like you say, it doesn't take a lot for the teeth to become bad again. Um, and especially with the maintenance and routine sessions is if there is any injury or something like that, which has then allowed any dirt or bacteria to get into the gum and fester, 
then mm-hmm. you'll you'll find that the dog will come back in six months time with swelling redness puffiness just not a nice sight so if you yeah. can just, again say to the client yeah but if i can keep on top of things for you more more likely we'll just get rid of anything that could be arising rather yeah. than okay my dog's in real pain it is a vet job yeah yeah and you don't want it to get to that point really where it's um the point of no return where they're having to go get put under anesthetic and get a lot of teeth taken out that's it and I think sometimes it boils down to confidence the way that you speak to your clients because you don't have to do it in um a bossy tone but no. One thing that I used to always do with my clients in my grooming parlor was I would get the diary out then and there and I'd say, right, we'll just book Fluffy's next um, maintenance teeth cleaning for the next like six weeks time. What's your best day? And I literally wouldn't give them a choice. (laughs) So I can do it with a smile on my face and I can be really nice. But I'm like, Fluffy is going to be booked in for the teeth and what's your best day of the week? Um, Whereas if you're a bit, you know well what day would you like to come in for Fluffy's next appointment you're giving them the ownership over it and really you're the professional you know how how often that dog needs to come in to keep the teeth well well that's it you you kind of need to fill your client with confidence that you know what you're doing you know what is best because they're coming to you ultimately for your experience and for what you do best yeah. So if you can then say, yep, yeah, you'll need to come back in six weeks time. We'll book for this day. Is that OK with you? They'll go. Yeah. OK, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. And and sometimes it's the client management that can be the difficult bit. And that's the bit that um, some pet professionals will struggle with. And that's just something that comes with time and experience. Sometimes once you get familiar with your product, um, and the more clients you see, the more confident you'll feel about it all. Yeah, yeah, because you will get some clients that come in um, that, that do have dogs that really don't want their mouths touched. Mm. Um, so in that case, you can't also be afraid to turn people away or say, OK, I'll do what I can for today. But in the meantime, can you use the Orozyme gel just to mm-hmm. soften up for me, make my job a little bit easier? Um, can you also just try and stick your fingers in your dog's mouth, please, so that I don't get my hand bitten off? Yeah. Um, it's it is just working with them, but not point blank saying no in the beginning. Um, because if you do have a client that messages and said, oh, "Okay, my my dog really does have bad teeth. Can you just have a look?" Mm-hmm. Just say yes, I'll have a look. But when it gets to that point, if you if you do feel like you can't do anything, then just just say it. And again, that that will fill your client with confidence that you know you can say no yeah and it's you know if in doubt then always refer the clients to the vets if if you're if you think that the teeth have got um problems if they're looking really unhealthy gums and teeth if there's some decay if there's um wobbly teeth just refer that client to the vet because your client will they'll view you a lot more favorably for it but they can book back in you know six weeks later to carry on getting the dog's teeth maintained um and you can make that book and then and there and say go and see your vet but I'll see you in six weeks time then you know that they've had the veterinary dental work done they're going to come back to you and then you're going to have hopefully a client that will come to you every six weeks to avoid future veterinary dental work well even after they've been to the vets you still need to be there to to do the maintenance sessions because like we just said you can't just get it done and then think nothing of it again especially yeah. if you have a dog that's maybe seven or eight and is is kind of getting a bit bad mm-hmm. their teeth, you still have to carry on to make that dog as comfortable as possible yeah um somebody else has put a question um this is something that that comes up in some cases have you ever had a difficult dog that's taken longer to achieve results with and how do you approach this with your customer Yes, um, I, I find that the the older dogs are usually quite problematic, especially if they're not used to being touched around their mouth. Um, you will also find that you'll get a few scratches along the way. Um, but the only way to deal with it is to just say, OK, I've done what I can. Mm-hmm. Perhaps can you just use this gel again? Can you just try to, to just touch a dog's mouth in between now and the next appointment? And then if I can't get anywhere near, then again we'll have to refer you for vet treatment if you want it if not just buy the gel from me and I'll replace it whenever you run out yeah there's always ways 
to keep people happy and to still feel like you're doing something for them and their dog. Um, whether you are doing the Emmy pet treatment or whether you're just saying, okay, I'll give you some guidance also with treats and different things. Um, they might say, okay, if you can't get the toothbrush in, what else can I do? Mm-hmm. So this is where the research comes in of what to actually recommend to your client because yeah. you need to give them the right things to go off, the right things to buy to. Yeah. And I think your clients will really appreciate you all the more for that. Um, I remember a Jack Russell Terrier that came into my grooming for Emmy Pet and she was so old, bless her, and cratchety and she really could not be bothered with having her teeth cleaned. But we used a lot of sessions desensitizing her and making her acclimatized to the toothbrush. So in those sessions, there wasn't a lot of toothbrush action happening. But by, you know, session three, session four, she was sitting and letting us do it. But we needed to put that work in first because the worst thing that you can do with a client that doesn't want to have it done is really force them to have it done because that's going to be so counterproductive. Um, so we spent a few sessions on that dog and the client was more than happy to do that, knowing that she was just paying really to get to have the dog familiarized and socialized. But she did not want that dog going under anesthetic at the vet because of its age. Um, let me see. Is there any more questions? All right. So going back to what you said about being booked up for three weeks um, for your first three weeks solid. Yeah. Um I know it's early days, but income wise, how long do you think it's taken you to see a return on your initial investment for your kitten training? Oh, this is a really broad question. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Um, To be honest, for me personally, I didn't have that much outlay because I already had a room that I can use. I don't pay to rent the place. It was just the initial outlay of a table, a dog bed um, and somewhere to to kind of put your papers and and just to sit down for the client basically Mm -hmm. um so for me it's only going to take a month and that's it yeah um but for anyone else looking to invest in it if you are needing to rent a table or rent a space um or if you're just adding it to your grooming salon this can really vary um and especially with your prices you can kind of price it at wherever you feel like you need to be yeah make sure that you actually get your money back but if you can just market yourself do your research properly it won't take long to get it back yeah because yeah, like the business starter package that i do for pet professionals that uh i think that's about 295 and that includes you get your toothbrush you get 10 brush heads you get um five tubes of paste you get all the rosewood sticks and yeah. um, you get leaflets dental cards and you get the training course and um Based on the price and structure that I use, I think by about your first eight clients, you'll have broken even. So, I mean, your first eight clients, depending on where your business is, where my business was in a little rural town, you know, I I definitely had eight clients in my first week. So, you know, depending on the nature of your business. You can, you can easy break even on your first like week to your first month. Yeah, it, it just depends how you're adding it into your business or into your life, whether you're doing it full time or whether you're just doing maybe one a week. Mm-hmm. It could take a couple of months or it could take a week. Um, yeah. It's just dependent on everyone's individual circumstance. Yeah, definitely. Um, right. Last question. What advice would you give to anyone that is thinking about starting off with Emmy Pet? Um, and they may be sitting on the fence, they're not quite sure, what advice would you give to them? I would say do your research as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, If you are sitting on the fence, go and look at reviews, go and look at um, what it actually is that the Emmy Pet toothbrush is doing, because once you then start to see the reviews and see the results, you'll understand why everyone else loves it so much. Um, and then once you actually receive it and then start doing it yourself, you'll think, why didn't I do this before? Yeah. The same as you with waiting 12 months, you'll think, oh my goodness, what was I waiting for? Yeah. Um, but I would, I would definitely say, again, do your research and make sure that if you are going to um, advertise this as a business and, and go down that kind of route, again, for research, make sure that you're filling your clients with confidence mm-hmm. and that you know what you're doing and what you're saying if not if you just kind of start to blabber on about things they'll go ah 
Does she actually know what this is or is she just giving it a go for the hell of it? Um, so yeah, as long as you, as long as you do that and, and perhaps a training course with yourself, just so that you can just install that confidence into people, um, that it, again, it is okay to say, no, it's good to know what to look out for. Um, and then when to refer to a vet is, is a major thing. So yeah. I, th I think the course with you was incredibly beneficial. Oh, thank you, Hannah. That's okay. <laughs> and I'm so pleased that you're, that you're doing so well with your new service. Oh, thank it makes me so proud and I want to do like a little happy dance for all of anyone who's done my training and they you know they've got the right attitude and they sort of hit the ground running with it and they're, they're really impressing the clients and getting some amazing result um it just makes me want to do a happy dance oh well, that's lovely I do a happy dance all the time <laughs> can I get another one but can I go yay <laughs> and I love your business name as well I think that's an awesome name clean canines oh, Thank you. Yeah. Well, I thought, oh, goodness, if if in time I want to open up a salon at the same time. Yeah. It still goes well. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fab. Well, thank you so much for, for chatting to me. And um, I hope that some people that watch this will get get a benefit out of it. Um, and if they want to know anything about Emmy Pet, I'll put this up on on the socials. And I'll put this in the group as well. So if anybody wants to ask any questions, um, you can either answer some questions or I will. And thank you. Yeah, definitely. No, I appreciate it. Thanks for inviting me. It's all right. Thank you so much. Um, I'll just find this record button and turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't find it. Honestly, technology. <laughs>